concreting that is called hope. And hope there is the anchor to your soul that is both sure and steadfast. Regardless of what a man goes through in life, it's better for that man to be alive than to be dead because when you are alive, there is hope. And it says like a sprout of water, hope is like that, that will cause that individual to flourish and eventually make that person fruitful. So hope is a powerful thing. It's the anchor to your soul, it's that which is sure and steadfast, and it's that which enters within the veil. Hope there is not something that, you know, when you have, you are trying to say that, you know, uh, it's my vision. Hope is an anchor. I would say the tremendous energy that is unleashed in the lives of people, in terms of enthusiasm, in terms of energy, in terms of ability to do things and to stay focused, regardless of what's going on in the environment, the real secret is it comes from the power of hope, which means that I be somebody that just thinks they should do something or wants something to happen, or, you know, just says that, well, this is what, you know, success means um, in my own generation, therefore I want to be successful, but the person don't, doesn't, or the person hasn't seen uh, their hope, which is what Paul calls the hope of your high calling that you can only get to when you have the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the eyes of your understanding has been enlightened. Which means that you will come to understand certain things that you are seeing and you are hearing and that will crystallize into a powerful dream for your own future. So we we'll look at that. This is something that is concrete. We're not just talking about the figments of a person's imagination, but something that is concrete. And with hope, only you as an individual, you'll see it. You'll see it clearly, it's very apparent to you what other people around you might not say it. And that is the seed. That is the beginning of what will bring about a difference between two individuals. We want to talk about the process where it appears that one is taken and the other one is left behind. That two people are going to the field together. Similarly, they're engaging in the same set of activities, but they are processing things on a different level internally, starting with the power of the vision, which is hope that is that anchor to the soul that is sharp and steadfast, that will make an individual do certain things under certain circumstances that somebody else will look at and say that, you know, how are you doing it? It's the power of your vision. The energy is unleashed from uh, that word that is called hope. It unleashes the energy, it makes you, provided what you are doing is in pursuit of that particular vision, you can stay up for an entire day doing that activity once you know that it's translating that energy into progress in your own life. So there's no mystery around that individuals that are highly driven and highly motivated is that they have seen something. It's the hope that the Bible says that a man has and so that man purifies his soul. It's the beginning of every great thing in the life of a person. Which is, there's an internal struggle. There's an exercise that closes that gap. And when you go through that exercise, it leaves you with abilities and skills, which means you developed during that time that you will possess for the rest of your life and will make you appear as an extraordinary person. In fact, psychologists have said that the root of envy is that people see somebody they think they are like, who is like them, just like them, having everything, suddenly that person begins to demonstrate extraordinary abilities, suddenly events start coming out, the person starts taking giant strides and all of that, and then the individual suddenly become envious. They're not envious of people that they feel that this person has a better position. If they feel that, let's assume they meet somebody 
who came out of a particular family they felt was privileged and therefore we can understand and explain why he seems to have an advantage over me in this area because like we can see that um, the, the ground wasn't really it wasn't a level playing field everybody understands that but when an individual uh, that you feel that you know there's a level playing field like um, said that envy stems out of it and suddenly that individual comes with a burst of energy and then just begins to go and the things just begin to happen and it looks like mysterious events seem to be unfolding before your eyes that's when it comes out and we're looking at the roots of such extraordinary abilities people that suddenly just start surging and massive things start happening inside their life so there's an internal struggle that i want to talk about today it's an exercise it's an exercise that if a man engages in for six minutes it will do more to that person as an individual in developing ability than the individual just sitting down for um, one year and listening to information that pertains to their fulfillment of their goal or their dream. It's an exercise that if an individual goes through for six minutes in their lives, is worth more than just one, two, three, or even four, five years. Of people just getting information and depending on things on the outside. This exercise, I want to speak about it, but the point I want to bring about in hope is that those that will subject themselves to the discipline of this exercise, uh, Paul spoke about this. He said, um, bodily exercise profited for a little while. He says, but this exercise has the promise of life that now is and then in eternity which means everything everyone you engage in this it will produce things for you in this lifetime and then it will also produce things for you in eternity so when you engage in that it produces that particular thing within your life so as you engage six minutes of it will do more for you than you're just sitting down and listening to information for all that let me give a practical example here Found out scientifically in studying how human beings operate, and I want to show you that it's a learning process, a way of learning things. I want to show you here how you actually learn things in life. Because the times where people learn, the Bible says, are never come into, which is they're constantly exposing themselves to information, but they never ever arrive at the conclusion that sets them free, that liberates them, that transforms their life. And he says, after some time, the individual starts developing itching ears, which means that something is about more information, more information, more information, but there is really no translation of that information into quantifiable progress, into advancement, into movement, and all of that in the life of that person. While some other individuals might not seemingly be as, in, as informed as some other people, but they have these outbursts and things are happening. This will explain why the average New Testament believer is more informed than um, um, the patriarchs, which means that he can almost explain how Abraham produced everything but can't produce anything. Which means intellectually he has a grasp on scripture, but in terms of demonstration, there is absolutely nothing. So the individual out of arrogance and all of that can say things, but when it comes in life of the in-person, like when we're in school, I know we'll do word movement and revelation but you know, none of that. A friend of mine told me, he said, all that Daniel did for 21 days, pray and fast, and I'll do two hours. I hope you know what he did for 21 days, pray and fast. He said, I'll just sit and pray for two hours and all that. But the two hours of prayer doesn't, this is a man that transformed government. This is a man that changed a nation. We can say that he assumed that it was a change by an election or by a coup. It was his intercession that moved it from one empire into another empire he dislodged. So people can speak arrogantly about things, but there is a process that if a person engages himself in for, uh, for one hour a day, will produce much more than someone just being informed. And that's what I'm talking about today. But I want you to understand because we'll go to the that you will not subject yourself to this discipline if there is no dream. And that dream is not something that we can give to you. That dream is something that you must capture. That dream is something that you must catch by your own self. I want to speak about the inheritance that deals with that dream, our inheritance or that hope, 
not as something that is theoretical there, as you know, what I'm talking about, the wishes of the kingdom of heaven that is out there. You know, so that was thinking about it, that most of what Christians know, they can't practice. Really, they don't really understand it in a way they can practice it. Oh, you understand it? They understand it's an eternal inheritance, but they can't practice that. They understand that, you know, you know, um, you can, how do you, how do you practice, how do you enter into this inheritance? Yes, we know that there's an eternal inheritance, we know the Greek word, we know, but how do you get up and, you know, you know, get it? I mean, I will make it seem that you say one day in prayer, you know, you just should, you know, have this revelation that will come to you and God will just speak to you and say, my son, my son, my son. And most people that get voices, really, even in Christian, don't act crazy. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Which means that they miss everything, those are heavy voice, and all of this. They really don't want to fight. You can't find anybody out there that will just tell you that, you know, I just heard this voice and then it translated into something concrete, something that is beneficial and all of that. This thing goes through a particular process, and when we put Christianity on that pedestal, then people cannot access it. And that's why I believe, listen, no matter what anybody says about the message of Joel Osteen, I uh, might say it looks like water down um, and of the gospel and all of that, but people can practice what that man says. And that's why his church is growing. They can listen to him and at least take one principle and go back and know that I can practice this. I can put this to work in my life. I can change my attitude. I can, you know, even if he talks about laughter, you know, as a way of, uh, at least I can go back and laugh. I can practice that particular thing, one after the other, I can put it to work. But when you preach a message that, you know, is powerful, you know what I'm saying, and emotionally powerful and all that, well, people can, they just cannot connect. But well, nobody wants to say anything because everybody wants to say that, I got it, I got it, I got it. You understand this? But nobody wants to say that, how do I practice? All right, there's eternal inheritance there. I am now inside my office. How do I get into the inheritance? How do I possess? But at least for the for the nation of Israel, God showed them the land. They saw the enemy. They saw the land. They knew we were to possess this, and they understood. It was clear. It was and this. But we have to make it clear and all that. So we're speaking about this exercise that will take care of one single project. And um, first, I want you to understand the is that you will not engage in this. You will not go through it if there is no dream. So we will show about uh, show how to get the dream and then talk about this process of actually learning where you come into the knowledge of truth or where you close that gap and come to the point where you can do extraordinary things as an individual in your life. Now, starting about that internal struggle, let me give a glimpse into, give an example about that struggle. Um, an experiment, we did a couple of experiments I've done but there was a case where, you know, um, um, you had, and for example, let me give an example now. If you, just show you how it works. If, you know, I ask a question, and I, and I did it as a basketball, I was trying to remember, I was going to tell church. So I made him, give myself a challenge that I must find his name without asking anybody, because I can see his face very clearly. You know, don't say his name, I can see his face clearly, all right? He used to play for Houston Rockets, now I keep but I can see his face clearly, right? And told me in this exercise that pictures, uh, you know, last more than words because I can see his face, I can see him talking to Michael Jordan in an interview, and Michael Jordan making fun of him, but I must get that name. Now, but here's the issue about this struggle now. I want to get a name. All right, yesterday, uh, yesterday I was trying to explain to somebody about what happened. We were talking about Mark between Nigeria and France, and I was talking about that. Oh, the French team was complete, all right? And that Daniel Ka was there, this woman was there, I was told, and then I got to the left full back and I said, um, 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 What's his name again? He came from Manchester United, and I made sure I retrieved that name. Now, what happens is this there are two ways in which you can do it. If you meet someone and say, Can I remember your name? I remember I told me, I remember your name, I remember that name. Now tell me, all right? If somebody on the outside helps you and tells you that name, which means in a passive way, without you participating at all, you receive that information you are likely to forget. But if you go through that internal struggle of five minutes and stay there until you draw that name up by yourself, you fire a signal through your system that impresses it and engraves it on your memory that it will stay with you for a very long time, if not the rest of your life. That struggle is what many people don't want to do when they ask somebody on the outside to help them. Transformation by the renewal of your mind is metamorphosis. Nobody helps the butterfly. Are you following what I'm saying? And that's how the butterfly learns to fly. It doesn't ask anybody, can you teach me how to fly? It simply learns from within how to fly. Same thing about a child. I want to speak about the learning process. 
Do you know that and I believe that God made sure that the child walks before he can talk? So that he doesn't have the ability to ask anybody, how do you walk? Because the minute you ask, you get confused. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. How the child learn how to walk without asking any adult, how are you doing it? The child sees them, observes them, and then begins to go through that targeted struggle. Which means I have a goal that I have seen in my environment. My vision is that I want to be like this person that I can see here. I want to be like my father or my mother, and therefore that internal struggle starts that is not visible to our eyes. It is going on on the inside. Every uh, the faculties that are necessary to teach that child, and then after some time, uh, the child suddenly has learned how to walk, and then the child gets up and starts walking. It is that process we want to speak about that goes on on the inside of yourself until you learn and close that gap between your dream and where you are today. Which means that this is all that I have today, and I have got to feed 5,000 with five um, loaves of bread and two pieces of fish. How do I close the gap between my dream that I have and the resource that is in my hands today? And then you go to the brother without asking anybody any question. Have you ever found out who cancelled Joseph? Mm. Oh, that's my loan in prison. Who told Jacob when he was in Levan's house how to multiply? Nobody. People are depending so much on the outside that they are destroying the faculty that makes them grow on the inside. And let me say this sadly, the church is the number one institution that is offering too much help on the outside. I repeat that the church is a place where people are working the most on crushes. There are people out there in the world that have no support structure like the church, so to speak. And are doing massive things in business, and you have Christians depending on meetings to try to succeed in business. And therefore, the growth that should occur on the inside of them, the transformation that should occur, and until they come to this platform, I and mean, I should say this when the church wasn't even uh, this large, that I don't work on crutches. You learn from the inside, and people learn from other people this way, not by question and answer, but by remarkable observation. And where we are going to is that people are going to learn from other people. I learn from people. I learn from people in this church. I observe people. I look at them. I learn from people. People in the office, I learn from them. I look at the way they do things. I learn. I take counsel from them without having to ask them questions. Processing things deep on the inside. So I get to the point that the person who is learning in that state, in that zone, Right? That space there, learning how to grow their business, it goes out and they've gotten themselves into this flow that even they, they, they see the way the hen is with the cheeks and they're looking at the head and suddenly they're receiving instruction. They go out there, the same way it says, look at that field that is unkept. It said, listen, what is the instruction you receive from your environment? Yet a little sleep. A little slumber, a little folding of hands to him, social and poverty, which means the individual gets, even from their environment, they are picking up things and they are learning things. But there's a struggle that is involved there. That internal thing in reaching that particular place, which means that it starts first and foremost with a dream, and then you do that. Which means most people are really going to give up. If you start thinking about that name, all right, and you start, it starts getting to stress level, you give up. I can't remember the name of the level back of, of France. Let me go and find something else to do. You understand what I'm saying? The only way in which you are going to do it is that you know there's some value that is added to you apart from getting to know that name. Because I can get to know the name by asking somebody. But I want some internal value there by drawing it out by my own self. One. And then number two. You also understand that apart from the value that is drawn, you also know that they say that this thing will stay with me for the rest of my life. And that's why you don't have to teach a child how to walk. When the child learns how to walk, the child just keeps walking and then keeps running and keeps doing all of that. So first is this dream. So I only do it if there's really a massive dream that is out there that I'm reaching for. So we said that. It's the same thing also. And that's why you must practice. That's why you must play listen. That's why I found out, and I've been saying this theoretically, but I have scientific backing now, that one of the most destructive things that happened to the church and ministry in this country was churches going into the campuses. One of the worst things that ever happened in ministry was churches because they went in there with money, 
They went in there with the organizational system and they killed. That was one of the greatest breeding grounds. At least in big cities, maybe in small places where each other that's one of the greatest breeding grounds for ministry. Six people that had to go in there and struggle when they were there on campus had to learn it. That's where God was bringing everybody from. He wasn't bringing them from Bible school. Go and check it. Uh, we have never read the book, The Last of the Mohicans. Sometimes I feel like The Last of the Mohicans. You, you remember the Lord of the The Last of the Tribe. Everybody did that. Bishop, when you the campus fellowship, two of them joined the campus fellowship. Oh, yeah, I was a campus fellowship. All these people are coming out of those places. Where you had to struggle, where you had to get things done, where you had to exercise yourself. I don't know, I'll say that. Where you had to do certain things. Where you didn't have all this sophistication. And let me tell you, psychologically speaking, you learn less when in a sophisticated environment than when you have a struggle. Let me tell you the truth. Yeah. Once you get there, there's certain parts of your being that just relaxes. So I'll say you don't raise offering. How did you ever find out to raise offering? The truth is, I can't teach it because I had to, it grew on the inside when I was on the campus when we were financing projects that were beyond ourselves. And then we made up our mind and said, listen, we are not going to go out and get any help from anybody. We are not going to do that. We are going to grow from the inside. Does that it? And so when you start doing that, we look at it. And that's how even nations like Brazil have been able to control world football because they have places, right, where that kind, they call them hot beds, where they actually breed that kind of talent. Listen, where they breed that, where people grow, where people develop, where those things on the inside grow and those things develop. Another example I can give is, no matter, I mean, till date, I don't know how to do it because I've never tried it. When, when, when they talk about uh, if you're born in pain and they're in presenting life jackets and telling you how to, I've never tried it. Every time I look at you, I look at them, I'm not trying it. And you found out that if you sit somebody down, tell them about life jacket, life jacket, about the point about to fly, all right? We're not saying that any danger will come, but should in case the pilot decides to play a game and says, with everybody, please put on your life jacket right now, you will find people struggling. They've been listening to this information maybe for five years in their life. But suddenly they put it on, they are looking for. This is what just theoretical information you understand. Just listening to messages is not enough. And you get what I'm saying? When people get to that, they start fumbling and thinking what's going on. Hey, but the pastor said, you understand? But they said, they said, you know, they said. So the pastor begins to, I know that the pastor said, you must be right now, right now, you have 10 minutes. And the panic now sets in 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Where, where, where does this go? Where, and the person starts looking and starts looking. Oh, I don't want to listen on that. But if they were doing it in a learning process, said, all right, we're not going to tell you how to wear this thing. This is a life jacket. You give it to somebody and throw it to the person. Go and figure out how to wear it. That is why by themselves, they figure out how to put it on. They will never forget. But we have been telling and telling and instructing. And now go and do it. You can't. So they're not suddenly there. Someone says, go and practice. So the word practice is what we're talking about. The problem now is that what God asks you to do when he gives you a vision, you can't practice it on the outside because it can amount to death. You know what I'm saying here. God says to Moses, here is the vision. My people must get across. How do you practice that? They tried it. Carried it the and they know what was doing. All right? They carry and they give you, here is the vision. We must cross the Jordan. The same way the Red Sea parted. What's the process? They said, well, they gave Joshua a clue. You have to meditate until you can do what? Observe to do what to do. So here we're speaking about those tools. We want to talk about that uh, today. There's a tool in particular that we want to speak about. A tool of that, which is, um, it's, a, it's a certain way, which means there is a certain way and there is a certain tool that God has given to us, a certain tool through which he wants us to close that gap and come to the point where we have a dream and we know exactly how to get there. And as we go there and do all of that, we make our way prosperous and we have good success in life. So it's that clo- closure of that. And it's going to come by what is called fight the good fight of faith. That the terminology that Paul used, but then it's that 
struggle there, fight it, and lay hold upon life eternal. Therefore, let me say to you one thing here. If there is nothing that you are exercising yourself to accomplish that is beyond your present ability, there is nothing that information will do. Let me say again. If there is no goal and there is no dream that you have as an individual, that you have as an individual right now, that you are reaching for, right now, that you are struggling to get to by your own self, all right? Now, I do understand that most people in life simply want to have slightly above average kind of lifestyle. They want to be married to a nice looking person, that will be a nice person and a kind person that will send last, that will send chocolate, that they will have a nice looking car, two of them, one for the wife, one for the children. I mean, have a small car for the children. Buy one house, one of these houses that they sell, um, terrace houses. Buy one of that, you know, travel for summer every year. Not really go to first class, you don't need that. Put us just in business class or premium economy. We're okay with that. We are modest people, come back and have a good Christmas. That's really what most people do. Let me really understand this. Let me come listen and say, yeah, hey, what? That is the, that's the goal. All right? So really and truly, there is no push, all right? And a job can give you that. Are you following what I'm saying? All right, a job can probably give you that. So you will come to you can come to church for other reasons to socialize, to you know, and all that. But a job can probably do that. But you'll see that everybody that learns this kind of thing was given a dream by God. That's the starting point. God didn't give them any rules, regulation. There was no law in the time of Moses when he started out. There was no law for Abraham. There was no law for Jacob. There was no law for Isaac. There was no law for Joseph. But they had a dream. All these men started out with a clear cut dream. They knew on the inside of themselves in a very clear way what to do. And let me tell you something about this exercise. I was reading a book on African entrepreneurs. This is true. You understand this? Very true. And I said, this is what happened to me. When you face those challenges, when you have to face those challenges, and when God starts out by giving you goals that are just a little bit beyond yourself or just out there, they're not massive. It leads to major things. When you kill the bear and the lion, Goliath will show up. If you don't kill the bear and don't kill the lion, it will not lead to Goliath. If you kill the bear and kill the lion, Goliath will show up. I was reading this book on Afghan, there was this fellow who said, you know, he started his business in his father's garage, and suddenly he looked out of his window, and this is what it's all about. And I'll show you this. And suddenly he saw that they were building a fantastic structure in his father's, um, across his father's house in Ikoyi and looked at it. He said that this was supposed to be the most expensive office complex in Ikoyi at that time. And something happened on the inside. I want to have my office there. You're standing in the garage. He said, that's where I'm going. And when he got there, they called the price. And then they said, you have to pay three years. He said, I struggled to give the down payment for one year. We are still building then I went into a greater struggle to pay the second year. By the time they said we should all enter on that, on that day, I had a third year rent. He said, then it dawned on me that your dream is your reality. He said, it dawned on me that once it's your dream and you stay with it, it will become your reality. While he was in that office, a friend of him, a friend of his walked up to him. And then there was an offer where they had to make a purchase of $16 million for something. He said the bankers were laughing when they were telling them, laughing. They almost he said, why will you find the body? They're laughing. <laughs> but you know, if you have killed the bear, God won't tempt you with $16 million if you have not yet gotten that office. You understand what I'm saying here? Yeah. And anybody that gets that office, once you have surmounted it, to him that has, shall more be given. To him that has, shall more be given. It's a law. Which means what you see today, if you cover the ground, if you accomplish it, more is coming to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the law. If you reach out for something that is greater, I mean, let me tell you this. I mean, I say not a lie. Look, look, we stretch ourselves in terms of reaching for speakers to bring those people for platform. Automatically, it opens you to another higher. That's how it works. You it automatically your your thing does expand and says, I'm going for this person, I'm going for this person, I'm going for this. I mean, the names I'm calling now, you will need government. 
or else they come and carry you. You will need to inform that, please, so that is coming. I mean, I told somebody in South Africa, I said, hey, this is here in Africa, we will be from Africa, the whole of Africa. You understand this? But I can't go back to, what was it? Excuse me, I can't go back. I can't go there. You understand what I'm saying? So how does it start? It starts by one major word that is called perception. Which means, I'm saying this, that your inheritance, your destiny, your life, what you have to do next, everything is right before your eyes today. Everything is within your environment. That's the starting point. We saw in the book of Acts that it says that if you will just feel after him, for he is near to all every single one of us. For in him we move, we, we live, we move, and have our beat. Which means that God is around, he's in the environment here. He's there. And he says, Who is as blind as my messenger and who is as deaf as my servant? I want to show you something concrete within your environment. I want you to see it. Not something that is theoretical in the heavens that we can see within the environment. It must be able to see it clearly. And God said, I want to open up your eyes and show you that. I want to start with the power of perception because that's where it is. Some people are seeing things at a death while other people are simply not seeing it. Which means that they on a level playing field. Everybody looks the same. They don't have the money. They don't have, I mean, this fellow that bought this thing for $16 million had to explain to his wife when they were going on money one. That instead of spending 1,000 pounds that we have, that's all. Let's spend 500 pounds so at least I can buy two computers. He started out in the office in his garage where his friends everybody used to laugh at him. I said, so, so I think we can buy two computers so I can at least have a computer for myself and then employ someone and the wife again. So this is not something that is beyond that, you know, the person had, you know, and all that. And all the banks that facilitated it are there too. Are you following what I'm saying? You say, well, the bank, well, the bank is there. You walk in and walk out. Uh, you get what I'm saying here? Yeah? Are uh, you following what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's all in the environment there. The question is, how did it start? It didn't start with more money. It didn't start with anything. It started by the power of perception, the ability to see it to the point that you recognize that this is yours. When you are able to see your own destiny, he said again they took him out for one business deal. And when he got to the ship, as he said, Listen, why will somebody subject themselves to it? It's the power of vision. This I want to see. This is where it starts. And he said, We went inside the speedboat 60 kilometers per hour. It was raining heavily. We had no lifeboat. Suddenly I sat down and I looked and I said, If this thing capsizes, we're all dead. What will make a man walk through the valley of the shadow of death? What will make him do it? A reasonable contract, the power of the dream. They are caught to your soul. You understand what I'm saying here? Yeah? It's not something that you will just say, I decide I am going to do it. Something must drive you. What unlocks energy at that level? What makes the person do that? What is the what is the genius behind that? They are seeing something. There is a dream that they can see. They are seeing something. They are seeing something, which means once you are seeing something, you unlock energy at the highest level once you have seen it at that depth. And what I'm saying is, just said, it's right before you. So here, we find, about now time to look at this, this is what Elijah was telling Elijah. Elijah said, Elijah when he was living, he said, ask of me, what do you want? Ask of me. I mean, Power of vision, look, no, 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 get it. Well, ask of me, what do you want? And Elisha looked at Elijah and said, I want to do twice what you have done. Elijah told him, It is a hard thing you're asking for. This thing is not easy, it's hard. But there's one condition to manifesting much more, and that is a law for anything. He said, When I am being taken off, if you can see me when I'm caught up, he said, Then you'll be able to do it. He said, But if you don't get that, you are not going to be able to do it. Which means, this is not about wishful thinking. This is not about, I want you to have it, and you want to have it, you will get it. This is about fulfilling this condition. This is about you saying, and looking and saying, look, these people are manifesting greatness, I want to have it. And this is not about them praying for you. The only condition is, 
When they are cut off, and what Elijah was saying was that when I am leaving the earth, if you are seeing things the very same way I am seeing things, by the power of agreement between two of us, we're saying this, well, you have to see the way, which means that there is a way I see things. If you come in and you see it the way I see it, then you'll be able to do everything that I do. If when you are listening to words, you hear at the depth that I also hear, you will draw the same conclusion, you are having the same conversations within yourself, the same thoughts are popping up as you are listening. If you look into things, you see things this way in which I see things, he said, they say, you will do everything that I do. Which means Jesus, he said this, if you are going to do greater works, you must see it in a deeper and a greater way. You are going to have to see it. Which means, what did Jesus see when Jesus said, hey, it's not every time that Jesus, I'm going to show you. It's not every time Jesus said, let's go and multiply loaves. When was it ever that you were hungry, he looked and said, I see something, I see something, I see something. I see something. This is what we should eat. I, I, I can see something here. Now, and then he said, I'm doing it. He said, if you can see. That's why when Gehazi was with Elijah, Gehazi said, I'm shaking. Oh, the must kill us. And God said, open. Elijah, Elijah said to God, open his eyes. He opened his eyes. He said, now you see what I'm seeing. He said, yes. Are you having to rest? Yeah. Which means if you have the heart, if you can see, he said, that's the condition that must be fulfilled. Your eyes must be opened up to that. And I'll give an example of sin. And let me just say this here. The Bible says, he that created his brother is in darkness. Hatred for your fellow man and having a critical spirit will take you out of this. Are you what I'm saying? In this Christian walk, everybody goes at the pace of their vision. So leave everybody to, li- to live their life. Stop become, don't become the policeman and the correctional officer of the body of Christ. You are not appointed as such. Or the judge. And this is the church high court in the Kenya. <laughs> Passing judgment and condemning people. I've told you, people are no longer learning by hearing instruction from you. They are learning by observing your life. Produce results and they will learn. It says, if you will demonstrate this, it says, those that err will come to understand it. Are you reading the scripture? It says, and those that err in spirit will look at your life and because you have certain manifestations, they have to say, even the men that were watching like dogs, when Daniel manifested in fire, they said, okay, 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 your God is the God. There is a depth of manifestation, not even in this country where people are religious, where we will carry everything. Overnight, people just say, look, look, what are you saying? I'm following this world. But you know what? We are paying attention to correcting with words instead of correcting by action. We don't need teachers again on the outside. We need coaches. We need people that will look at their lives and they will coach us by the way they do things. Not people that want to control us by trying to control the mind. There are many things theoretically that I know. Theoretically that I know. That if I want to say to some people, I say, look, leave them, don't leave it. In this don't leave it. If you can take this thing to this level, if you can raise your game as an individual to this level, like someone told me, if the tides go up, all the boats on the water will rise. If you raise the game to a level, everybody simply follows. There is something deep about it. That's why when one man broke the world record, everyone else said break it, nothing. Which means that he taught them how to break it by doing it. You understand what I'm saying? He unlocked something on the inside. So perception here, let's look at it. Um, um, okay, okay, so you must see something that is there. And some of you that are walking, remember that they had a mistake. Why did they use it? They said they wanted money. You are not working for money. You are working for a vision. How God is going to reward you, wherever you are today, whatever you are doing, He will give you eyes that see and He will give you ears that hear. And you can see and you can hear as a reward. Which means you are not looking to the hand of your master or you are looking to God. And when you see and when you hear, if God says stay within the system, implement it. You implement it. They have great growth. Because you saw something that nobody else was seeing. So it says in second uh, Kings 4 here. Alright, 19. Oh, no, no, sorry, um, eight, nine, but that's how it is. And it fell on a day, I want to pass that, that Elijah passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. 
And so it was that as often as he passed by, they turned into that to eat bread. And then she said unto her husband, which when every time Elisha will come in and eat bread, probably many people are coming in, she was hospitable, and many people came in and will eat. And Elijah walked past many houses in that region. Listen, this was a woman that was barren. How did she finally get a home open? It started out by her, it wasn't by her praying and saying to God, God, you know, do something. And then God miraculously, something happened in her environment and the power of perception, which means that, look at what happened there. And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is a man of God that passed by continuously. How did she perceive that? It wasn't that Elijah was praying and Elijah was doing something. And, and went, I mean, I met somebody recently, someone in America, and the person didn't know I was a pastor. But he said, intuitively, I just knew that you were a good person. So, perception has nothing to do with it. It's not as though you see you praying, and, and not, I mean, they can see you praying and perceive that you, 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 Many people were in need, but this was the only woman that perceived that this was somebody. So what am I saying? The Bible says that with every temptation, God has created a way of escape. It's only perception that will make him sins. If you have a financial need, it's not of God and praying that money should come. There's another stream of income that is walking by. Are you perceiving? Are you seeing it? That need was to put pressure so that that struggle will start. Instead of you going and saying to somebody, give me money, go the right way, and say, God, open my eyes that I might see what you have already done about this situation. Because we are saying that God is there, the answer is there, your eyes just simply have to be opened up. What the enemy is doing is blinding the minds of people so they don't see this. So she saw. So perception is about seeing. The ability to look into your environment and see it. And so you also were saying that that dream that God is going to give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 4. And everybody should go back and make this your prayer until you, until you, until you see. Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 4. Yet the Lord has not given you a heart to perceive, eyes to see, ears to hear until this day. So this is a gift that comes from God. Eyes that see, ears that hear, is the Lord that gives it. Once you see and once you hear, you can see, you can hear. That's why Jesus Christ said, will say it, it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Which means that this life as it's unfolding, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven are unfolding every day. There are things that are happening that people cannot explain. There are things that are going on. God wants you to see. Do you get what I'm saying here? These mysteries are not, you got the internal Greek word, you understand what I'm saying here? It's not that you know I got the mystery, the mysterious thing. Was it? It's saying, listen, things that things that angels look into the earth and can't see those opportunities. Things that kings that built kingdoms couldn't see those opportunities. Prophets, they didn't see these things coming. It says now you people now have the ability to see things that kings couldn't see, to hear things that prophets didn't hear. So look within, in the same way Moses was going to be caught, the bush was born in there, and he turned around and he looked at it again, and it's something. And we are saying that several other things are going on. But for you to be able to see this, you must know the gravity of it. Because you must come to the point where you have that awakening on the inside. When you are reading a book, and suddenly there's that aha, that's it now. This is what my life is all about. When you are there involved in your law profession and suddenly you take up a law journal, look at it, and then you see maritime law and something explodes. Here is the territory I'm going to claim for God. This is where I'm going to be. Are you following what I'm saying here? There is no way you are going to have the vision for maritime law by studying. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? You can't look at officials and see maritime law there. 
You cannot know that you are supposed to play for Barcelona by you reading. You can never say, I'll show you why this people is coming. When all those men, Abraham, got their vision, they just got a vision. God gave it directly. They saw it. No one got it. When we read it as scripture, we start with theory. They started from practical. Yeah, you don't understand this? We are like we are almost like people who are doing who are doing um, what, do, what, what do you call it um, practicals in physics, eh? Biology? Huh? No, there's, there's practicals. There's practicals, sorry. Right? Why you go to? Oh, you have never been into the lab, never. Your reading is inside your box. They say this is the big guys. You have never. You understand that? They say the acid, if you mix this together, it will explode. You have never. So you just imagine that they will explode. You don't know how hot the day. So the day they give you, you don't even know. A man that is doing practical will say they don't carry like that. They just grab the day. They don't drink like they carry water. You see, that was happening. Like people don't read the Bible and then go to that. Pastor is not working. Let me tell you this. Nothing works until you see it. If you see it, huh? if you see it, you don't need any confirmation. Okay, if I tell you now that I have a Bible inside my office, please, I'm telling you, it's black, please, let me get it. And you go into that, you find you come back and say, Pastor, you said it was there, it's not there. I didn't see it. I, I didn't see you, you know that. But Pastor, you said so. Maybe somebody said now. But if you just enter my office, right? And then you saw a black Bible, you are alone in the office, and then you turn around, and then suddenly you say, okay, let me take this black Bible outside. And then you turn back, and the Bible has disappeared. Ha! If I come and say, look, maybe I'm the one now that owns the Bible. Maybe, or, or I'm telling you now, I, I, I'm the one that told you to go and say, maybe, maybe someone that says, no, you start, I'm not basing what this, this master is not based on what you say. It is based on what I saw. You will disconnect from my own unbelief because you did what you saw it. So we can teach and you are hooked up to us. You can see and you are hooked up to God. You understand what I'm saying? And when you see it, you keep on saying it. It's your vision. Then I said, I alone saw the vision. You won't expect anything. You saw the thing. I follow him. Now the issue is, I have now seen this thing, and I want to reach it. What is my dream? This is what it's this, this is what I'm all about. This is it. So you want to now get to that particular place. But based on what you know and based on what you have, there's absolutely no way in which you will be able to arrive at that point. So you want to engage yourself. Make use of this tool that was discussed to close that gap so that by the time you start acting, you are making your way prosperous. By the time you start acting, there is wisdom and all of that. But this thing is something that you will stay there the same way an athlete trains and an athlete trains and an athlete trains and an athlete trains and an athlete trains. You also will do what you will train and you will train, and then you will train, and then you will train. But every time you go, and finally when you show up, finally when you show up with that level of life as a permanent future of your being, the same way the child has now learned to walk, it's part and parcel. That level of existence becomes a permanent part. You are a partaker of the divine nature. You follow this? Let me just give an example. I was saying that it's given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, so it's not your next card. I was reading, right? A study. Because I meditate on the word of God, then I read information well. Right? I was telling someone that some just don't know me. I'm just I saw it. I mean, there's, there's a particular program I use. Watch, like I said, in one of it's about 2 a.m. I would get up and watch in my house. If I miss at 2 a.m., then I watch at 5 a.m. If I miss at 5 a.m., then I watch at 11 a.m. I always, every time I watch it, if I'm in a country where they're not showing it on Fox, I'll go on the internet and make sure I listen. I never tried. I just saw something yesterday, you know? Suddenly, I just saw that. Because I was doing the program, 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 I was
what, what to really be the program and build it. Suddenly, I just realized that that program I've been watching that was the most successful program on cable news in America because of certain qualities that they so because I mean one of the top so you have know, been you know, on top number one for for 100 months in America, everybody's doing what everybody's talking about. Everybody. What, what makes people watch you the millions every day for 100 months? You are number one, which means you have viewership at 8 p.m. in America. Most of the people in America are watching your own program. You understand what I'm saying? For 100 months, you are on top. Suddenly, I just realized that some of those things that I had learned unconsciously was what I wanted to start bringing into. I wasn't just watching for watching sake. God was training me for something. To be able to produce a heavenly, educative, Christian program that, that you can sit down and listen to, you'll be educated, you have scripture. You, and I started thinking about things that I was opening a book segment, discussing about things, but I just realized that that's, you know, some of you are interacting with things that God is trying to show you something. He's trying to show you something. He's trying to make you draw the conclusion. He's trying to make you draw the conclusion. And it's only when we start praying and you know that this is available and you understand that. So I was looking at our Do you know, found out that they've studied it, that what was common between common denominator between Calvinists and you say Bolt and all the people who have 100 meters in the last 16 years. Oh, people say they're talented. Oh, they were so talented. Oh, they had it in their genes and all that. They are older brothers and sisters. Oh, no, no. Listen, it was their genes and all of that. You know what they found as a common denominator between it? To show you the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. All of them were last ones, except one. You say, no. They were last ones. Carlis was only a Calvin Smith, or what? maybe six out of eight children. And they found out what happened was that when they were small, the elder brother and sister would just run in front of them. So they had to chase them. So they were running after everything from when they were born. <laughs> now, that's all they were. Now, that's a mystery. You understand what I'm saying? You know, if you understand that mystery, you can make your child the greatest athlete. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because you see something. Look, that's why somebody like um, um, Sir Williams' parents would have listen. He did it when they were eight. He came to a Grand Slam event and carried two cards off. Serena number one, Venus number two in the world, and was walking out like a madman when this people were eight and nine years old. How did he know it would happen? He must have said something. So when he says it's given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, it means that things have been happening on this earth from the foundation of this world that you start seeing. And when you take those processes into your business, boom! A little level levels the whole lot. Suddenly something extraordinary starts happening. So where did you get this information from? Did you learn it in a business school? Then you tell everybody, did a child learn to walk in a business in the water school? <laughs> They saw what I talk about. It's true. What's how a child learn to walk? The same way a child learn to walk was how I build my business. So in order for God to help you that your story to be sweet, they rejected you from the business you were crying. Because you are about to destroy your testimony if you went there. You understand what I'm saying? I know you don't agree at the end, but not until you took the exam, they said you failed. I didn't say you failed, they said you failed. You did to pass, but they said you failed. Because God was trying to. But when you have this reddish kind of thinking. Any small thing, no, you know, loss is loss, loss. You have lost lost. That's why in America I said the creative process states that there must be destruction before creation. Mm. <laughs> so I don't agree. That's what it means in you know Christians, except you use Bible, they will say they don't agree. <laughs> and that's what it means it takes away the force in order to establish yourself. <laughs> You know, what some of us are doing now, being smart to help Christians, is that there are some principles that we know Christians won't agree if you use secular terms. So we meditate until we find it in the Bible. So we can use spiritual terms. Because they just won't agree. If you say it in the Bible, I'm not there, I'm not there. I'm not there, I'm not there. 
If you say market, they will say, I can't market, 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 I can't
to see images. Look, if you're going to if you're going to tell me what happened to me in the past, I can explain it clearly to you. This happened, that happened, that happened, that happened. Right? I can explain it. I can tell you the process. But now I'm reaching for something. So if I'm calling it into existence, as far as I'm concerned in my mind, I already have this thing. So meditation now is that I'm now looking what happened. I'm meditating. How did we move from the Yerba Center into this massive auditorium? What were the things that happened? What were the scriptures that I saw? So in my mind, I'm, it's, oh, it's done. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not trying to make it. It's done. All right? So I'm looking at it. Then I start going into scriptures. And I start getting scriptures. Scriptures start popping up there. I start looking at the challenges now. How did we get the land? What was it that happened? Was it you meditating on it? You're saying was it somebody that came up and said, no, that was an option. You get there. How did you get the permits from the government? How did you get this or that? Oh, you have to have the guy. So you are right now, you're looking at the war. You are tackling those problems, real time problems, as you are thinking, going through everything, meditating on it, meditating on it, you come out of meditation, nothing changes on the outside, you go back there again in your free time and you start again. You understand it? After some time, some scriptures that you know that you'll be reading start coming out. They start coming out. Then they start showing you the